Hey, what's up? My name is Michael Westbrook. Thanks for checking out this video. Today, I want to show you guys how to blend and customize IRs for use inside the HX Stomp and the Helix. If you've seen some of my previous videos, then you know I'm a huge fan of using impulse responses to really step up the amp modeled tones in the HX Stomp. I want to walk you guys through blending and customizing impulse responses, as well as talk a little bit about my thought process behind it when I'm working on them. Before we get into that, we're going to take a listen to a quick demo that I made. In this demo, I'm using my two brand new presets, one for the Fawn AC30 and another for Deluxe Reverb. You guys have been asking for individual presets that are available for purchase individually, so I've done it. Each preset comes with three custom IRs. These IRs are brand new, created just for these presets. One other thing, if you're new here, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up button at the end of this video if you like it. I started this channel at the beginning of the year. The response has been amazing. Thank you for all you guys who watch every video and who are leaving comments and all that. It's a huge help and I really appreciate all of it. If you're new, then come join in. All right, let's get into it. All right, so let's talk blending IRs. A couple of things to note at the start here. First of all, I'll tell you guys that I'm using a plugin called Mix IR3 from a company called Redwires. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I'm a huge fan of the Two Notes Wall of Sound plugin, but unfortunately, that plugin doesn't allow us to do what we're going to do today. I'll also say that this video is not sponsored. I have no affiliation with Redwires. Um, I have just found this software to be really great for doing this for the HX Stomp. Another thing to keep in mind with blending IRs is that you generally always want to combine IRs from the same you know, maker or same creator. I've tried combining one IR made by one company and one from another company, and it just doesn't work. So if you have you know, a bunch of IRs from one person, then I would say try combining those first. Every time I've combined you know, different makers together, it just doesn't work. Um, I won't get into the details of this. It has to do with phase relationships and, and different uh, technical aspects of the IRs, but you're better off just sticking with combining IRs from the same manufacturers or the same companies. Now, that's not to say that you can't combine IRs of different speaker manufacturers. Say you have a IR that's made from a Celestian speaker and one that's made from an Eminent speaker. You can combine those as long as the manufacturer of the IR or whoever created the IR made both of them together. That will ensure that your phase relationship is correct and that you'll actually be making the sound better and not worse. So let's take a look at Mix IR3. I'll explain a little bit about the plugin and how I combine IRs. So I've got a couple of guitars pulled in from the demo we just listened to. Um, it is a picking part that happens during the B section, the middle section, and then it continues uh, through the outro here. Here's our Mix IR3 plugin. I've got some of my IRs that I've created here, and these are what I like to call raw IRs. These are unblended, 
they are just a microphone on a speaker. And you can see different speaker selections and different mic selections. If you purchase the full IR bundle on my website, you'll get all of these. So we'll start with a classic combination. I'm gonna select the Greenback SM57 and then a Greenback Royer 121. So how this plugin works is basically as I drag these IRs over to this side, then I have our volume fader here. We've got a pan control. This is a length control. We also have a global length control over here. Basically how this works is this, this allows us to adjust the level of each IR here with this slider. Right now we're hearing equal parts 57 and equal parts Royer 121. Let's listen and see what that sounds like. All right, so that sounds pretty good. So we'll play it and I'm gonna bring this Royer 121. I'm gonna bring it down a good bit. We're gonna see how it changes the sound. So that might be hard to hear, but essentially we're losing a little warmth um, and it's getting a little bit more of that brightness that we're getting from the 57. Now, a cool thing that I like to do as well is say I wanna combine a different type of speaker. You know, say let's, let's grab this gold, which is a Celestian gold. I'm gonna grab a gold with an SM57 on there. All right, let's take a listen to what that sounds like. I'm gonna leave it at 100%. So that gives us a slightly different character. Now I will say all of this is super subtle, um, but as you start messing with different speakers and different mic combinations and all of that, you really start to hear you know, the differences. You start to get familiar with how each one changes the sound. And now I wanna show you guys one other thing that I really love about the Mix IR3 software, and that is these other bundles that you can buy from Redwires. I believe the EQ bundles right now are like 20 bucks, which is super cheap. It's such a great deal. Um, if we go to our Mix IR3 plugin over here, then under IR modules right here, I've got these EQs. Now these are, Neve EQ um, impulse responses essentially. So we're gonna grab one of these and we're gonna pull it over here. If we hit that little gear right there, that pulls up our EQ controls. Now it's essentially like having a Neve EQ on our impulse responses or on our um, mics and you know the speakers. The thing I love about this is that for the HX Stomp or the Helix, we can EQ our IRs and we don't have to do it in the HX Stomp. I've seen guys where they use IRs, but then they'll have to use an EQ block to really tweak the tone. If we know what we want or we have the time to be able to spin and tweak it in Pro Tools or in a plugin like this, then we can just print it that way and so that we don't have to use another block to EQ our IRs. So here I can put a high pass, put a high pass at 82, We'll put a low pass, which is cutting off our high frequency. So let's put that down to 12K. Maybe you want to put some top end boost at like 6.8K. Maybe take out a little 1.8. I typically like to take out around 330 or 390. I'm going to make that high Q. So right now I'm not listening to it. I'm just kind of going with some settings that I typically like. But what you can do is you can experiment and EQ um, and see what you like. See how you can make the blends or a specific IR even better than it already is. Let's take a listen with the EQ in place. <laughs> So 
So here's it without the EQ. With the EQ. So as you can hear, it gets rid of a little mud. It gives us a little more clarity. Um, and then it also kind of cuts off the super low stuff that we don't need and the super high stuff that we don't need. As I was editing this video, I realized that there were a couple more things that I wanted to mention here. The first is, is about the setup in the video. So in the video, I have played a part through the HX Stomp recorded direct, and then I'm running my IRs through the Mix IR3 plugin. This allowed me to show you guys how I'm blending IRs, how I'm EQing them. Um, it just made a lot more sense for the video. But if I was actually you know, trying to make an IR, I would probably run into the HX Stomp and run it direct and play the guitar while I was tweaking the IRs. That allows me to, um, you know, try different parts and, and, you know, add effects and see how it all responds. That allows me to get the best overall sound and to really tweak the IR. Another thing I wanted to mention was, as far as EQ goes, I find that less is more in this scenario. Because we also have EQ on our amp models, um, we don't necessarily want to drastically EQ our IRs. We have several places to tweak, you know, brightness and bass and mids and all that stuff, um, whether it's EQing the IRs or EQing the amp models and et cetera, et cetera. So I find that less is more, um, especially when we're dealing with the IRs. Um, the less that we do any kind of drastic EQ, the more likely that those IRs are going to be usable on you know, different models and different types of sounds. I think ideally this is kind of our last stop in tweaking our tone, right? We wanna get the model dialed in as close as we can with an IR that we already like, and then maybe this is that last 5%. This is kind of just tweaking it that extra mile just to get things exactly how we want them. All right, back to the video. Now, whenever I, you know, land on a blend and an EQ that I want or that I that I like that's working well for me, I can come over here. I go to this little gear over here just to check my settings. Okay, export file wave. Um, we're going to export at 48k, um, and then this export mode. We're going to want to go to mono here. Even though we are dealing with stereo, I've kept our, um, you know, nothing is panned here with our IRs. And then here is where we export right here, this little folder. So after we've named it and we've exported it, then all we have to do is load it into our HX Stomp and we're ready to go. Now let's go back to our IRs and I wanna to talk to you guys kind of about how I think about it, how what I'm listening for when I'm combining IRs and, and a little more thought process behind all that. So here we have a selection of IRs, different speakers, different mics, a few different placements. This is really a place where it can kind of be like option overload, right? Um, I've seen some, you know, IR bundles that just have hundreds and hundreds of IRs. I don't love to have that many options all the time. So I really just try to isolate the types of sounds and think about what kind of sounds I'm going for. Now, some of this takes some learning. It's a learning process to learn what kind of speakers you like, what types of mics you like, what kind of combinations work well. Some of this might be just researching what are you know good mic combinations, what do people like, what are people using? Um, and then through all of that and through experimentation, you can really find what works best for you. So I personally love greenbacks. I've mentioned that before on the channel. That's just one of my favorite speakers. I love the sound of a greenback. So um, I also know that I love 57. So I'm gonna start with a greenback with a 57 on it. I'm gonna kind of use this as the base of my tone, right? This is gonna kind of be the main part of my tone. Generally, I'll keep whatever that speaker is up at 100%. Now, this is a cleaner sound and I know that I really love go the Celestian Gold on cleaner sounds. I just, there's something about the top end, there's a shimmery kind of um, brightness to it that I find works really well for clean stuff. So I'm going to, let's grab the SM7 on a gold and I'm gonna put that over there. 
Now, I also know that I don't want that to be the main part of my sound, so I'm going to bring that down. One thing on um, Mix IR is this button right here, and this essentially changes it where um, it's more of like what you're hearing. So if we change it back, if we put it to 50%, we're actually, it's contributing to more than 50% of the sound. So we hit this button, that's kind of more of what it's going to sound like. So if you don't pay attention to the number, but you just pay attention to the slider, that's gonna kind of be a better representation of how much of the sound it's representing or how much you're actually hearing it blended in. So we'll put that at about 20 or so. Let's listen to it without the gold and then with the gold and see how much difference we're hearing. <laughs> So that's without the gold, here's with the gold. All right, let's bring that up a little bit and see how it sounds. All right, so at this point, I would kind of get a blend or a combination of mics and speakers that I like. And then at that point, I might go grab an EQ to kind of tweak even further. For this specific sound, there's some low mid stuff that I'd like to clean up. Maybe I can shape the top end a little more specifically. Um, you know, it's just about experimenting. But the thing that's great about all of this is that I can experiment with it um, and then export the IR and put it into my HX. I have found that this plugin is super helpful for this. Um, and really helps me tweak the tones even further than just using IRs. It also helps me not go through hundreds of IRs trying to find the exact right mic and position for the sound that I'm going for. The ability to combine mics, um, combine different positions to kind of shape the overall tone, and then the ability to EQ it and export. Um, even though it sounds like a lot, it ends up saving me time because I'm not having to audition hundreds of IRs. It takes some experimenting, but if you're really trying to hone in your sound for a specific tone or just a specific sound, this is definitely the way to go. So that's how I blend and customize IRs. There's not a whole lot to it. It's just really about having the right tools for the job. Mix IR3 makes this super easy, not only to audition sounds and to try different blends and EQs, but also to export so you can drop it right into your HX Stomp or Helix. Again, this is not any kind of advertisement for um, red wires or anything like that. I just find this plugin to be super helpful. As always, thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you out there.